months, July and August, we were kind of having, taking a summer break and our next event in September will be at the Willett Center for the Arts upstairs. And we'll, uh, the, the topic will be parenting teens in Mendocino County. There is an elevator for folks that have any problems with stairs. Um, there is an elevator and there's a back set of stairs also that may be easier than that front set of stairs. So we're going to kind of try it on a, you know, a trial basis and see how it goes. As, as Suzanne mentioned, I've been practicing acupuncture for 30 years. So I start, actually started practicing Qigong at school and knew a lot about the principles and kind of dabbled. Uh, and then I, I began teaching more intensively about 12 years ago. Uh, started at what was body rituals. Um, and then just in the past uh, almost two years, I've been studying with a, a master in Berkeley. Uh, his name is uh, Bing Kun Hu, Dr. Hu, H-U. Uh, if you have any interest in uh, learning about, uh, about Qigong, come to my classes and look up Dr. Hu. I know there's a myriad number of teachers out there. Um, and all of them, I'm sure, are excellent. I, I found one that I think is fantastic. So, uh, and he comes from a long lineage. Um, goes back, I think, thousands of years. It's called the Wild Goose Qigong. Uh, so I'll do, we'll do some of that. We'll, there'll be demonstration, participatory demonstration. Um, so I'm gonna read a few things, but I don't wanna do too much information because um, Qigong isn't a brain uh, activity. It includes the brain, but it's body, mind, spirit. So, Qigong is the practice of cultivating life energy through movement, breath, and awareness. Developed over centuries and practiced by millions of people in Asia, it is rapidly growing in the West as the field of healthcare seeks low cost, scalable solutions. Safer than running, gym workers, workouts, and yoga, but offering many of the same fitness benefits. These opinions are mine, of course. Uh, <laughs> it goes beyond exercise to encompass the body-mind. Studies show its e efficacy in promoting strength, balance, weight loss, and enhanced mood. Anecdotal evidence offers testimonials on pain relief, symptom reduction, or reversal, reduced reliance on medications, and better quality of life. Qi Gong, two words in Chinese. Qi means loosely translated vital energy. The, the character for Qi is um, it's a pot of rice cooking. And it's what, what it is, it's the aroma. So Qi is the aroma that's coming off of the rice as it cooks. So when you think about what that actually is, it's solid, but it's not solid. It's a smell, but it's also food. It's, it's sort of this very vast sort of description. And again, Chinese characters are, are pictures, so they're, it's trying to, trying to convey an image or a feeling, not so much a mental meaning. Uh, so that's qi, and then gong is practice. So qi gong is pra practicing with qi. I would say Qigong is the maybe parents, parent of all uh, movements, uh, China, Asian, uh, maybe we could say other than Indian, but martial arts like Judo, Kung Fu, Karate, uh, Taekwondo, all those things, Tai Chi. Qi, Qigong is more of a generic term, but then there's specific uh, types of practices of Qigong. Again, the benefits, you know, I actually have some handouts that I didn't make enough, but we'll, um, we can pass these out and maybe share. This is more of a, of a pictures and few words, trying to keep this talk more in the feeling and sense realm. So, chi equals life force or vital energy. So here's a little popular guy. 
Dr. Oz, he says, if you want to be healthy and live to 100, do Qigong. So, you know, that, that seems kind of trite. But when you look at it, so that's, that's the teacher of my teacher. That, yeah. that she was 106. Wow. Yeah. Great. Um, so if you want to be healthy, is grace. And if you want to live long, that's grace. But you don't want to live long and not be healthy, right? That's no. kind of not so good. And yeah, so putting them together, that's sort of the essence of what this is about. Turn the page. The face of exercise is changing. People are chasing longevity, stress reduction, and improved health through mind-body practices like Qigong. I'm just backing myself up here. New York Times, Dr. Oz. So then we get to the benefits. So I would imagine that most everybody can identify with probably all of these. Increased stamina and vitality, reduced pain, stress relief, lower blood pressure, better immune function, bone health, better balance, improved sleep, and enhanced mood. Um, so I can vouch for all of these, and many of my students have come back. Often, some of my students will have just one class and be amazed by the, the profound effect on some kind of chronic condition, knee, knee pain or other joint pains, sometimes after just one hour. Um, so the, the practice is, uh, the key to this is the gong part, the practice. So it's, um, it's something that, for instance, we'll, we'll have a demonstration. And I, I will uh, tell you that you, you may not feel anything significant in a 10, 15 minute demonstration, but if you practice it regularly, you'll find that sometimes all of a sudden you realize you can bend down without pain or you can bend farther. Um, you're more relaxed. Your um, digestion's working better. Pretty much practice regularly. This can heal any part of your phys physical, physical body. And then I think we can also say, you know, if, you're, if all that's working better, you're just going to smile more. So, so I think that's sort of the spirit part. Now, who does Qigong? I don't know that you care about these people, but it is something to recognize the, the wide range, wide reach of it. But I, I'd say look down below the Henry Kissinger part. So, you know, we're Olympic athletes to us. Boomers and seniors. We got a few boomers in here. And we got some, what do you, X, is that what they call younger people? Millennials, there we go. College students, medical patients. Um, and, and just as an aside, the, the training I have currently, I'm training in what's called medical Qigong. And I'll, I'll demonstrate what that means. You can, you can understand. It's ver versus saying martial. You have martial Qigong and medical Qigong. So sometimes maybe if you watch a YouTube video of Qigong, sometimes it's very, there's a lot of punching and kicking. Um, a lot of force ex extending your, your energy out to the, to the farthest reaches. That's not what I'm trained in. It's, I'm, I'm practice acupuncture, so I'm working on, on the healing level of medical qigong. So a few testimonials. Someone's life was saved, teaches you to heal yourself. That's what originally inspired me to give classes, was I felt that my uh, patients needed some help from, from one treatment to the other. And uh, couldn't afford necessarily to the treatments, um, the, the, the frequency of treatments that would be required to actually heal them. Sometimes that would, might be five days a week for two weeks and that could get kind of pricey. So I was thinking, here's, a, here's a, an easy way for people to take care of themselves. Hasn't always worked that well. I mean, a lot of, a lot of times my patients want me to take care of them. My students are willing to take those steps to take care of themselves. So 
it's kind of a, a different mindset, but um, how about that one? A body that feels 20 years younger. So then the last one, far stronger, more alert, and spiritually more at peace. Okay. Uh, so again, I, I don't, I don't feel that it's something to talk about so much as as more we could uh, participate. Um, if you again, if, if you feel like you want to learn more information. That's what the computer's for. So maybe what we could do is um, make some space here, move the chairs out of the way, get in a, a circle, and I can demonstrate. We can participate. So we'll start with set your feet parallel, shoulder width. Okay, so I'm, I'm looking around and I want to see parallel. Now if you want, you can turn your feet and see what it feels like by putting them, look, like one foot apart. That's pretty good. Parallel. So we're not going to step like pigeons or ducks, right? And the reason for this is because what this does is it opens the sacroiliac area, the lower back. If we do this, we tend to arch. If we do this, we put strain here. Okay? You can, if you want to try it, just turn and just kind of relax there and get a feeling for what each one feels like. And then straighten them. And then press down slight, ever so slightly with your toes. Lift your arches slightly. So when I say slightly, it's almost like you're, you're just thinking about doing it, not doing it, but you're just on the edge there. So it's not, it's not like, and it's more just, just, a, just that, that edge between the thought of doing it and doing it. So then unlock your knees. So again, just, just let them relax so they're not tight, tight hamstrings. Be back like this, tight hamstrings. And then drop your tailbone. And when I say drop your tailbone, I mean, I don't mean tuck your tailbone. Because tucking implies that you're actively you're kind of doing this, this coming up. You just want to let it drop. Relax. Keep your belly soft. Okay, inhale through your nose into your lower belly. There's a point down below the navel, about three fingers down and three fingers in. It's called Dantian. Dantian translates as elixir field, and I'll get into that more. But it's our center, it's, it's the center, it's roughly the top of the uterus in women. Okay, so breathing down into that area. So the idea is obviously the breath is not moving down there, but when you breathe, you try to feel the breath and as, as if this wind is blowing in, being pulled in, and the energy of it filters down. So just breathing in through your nose, out through your mouth or nose. And then feel Feel that for a moment, and if, then if you can feel your your ribs and diaphragm lifting, and again, it's not I'm not lifting up. Just have a sense of lifting. Again, it's the moment just before you're actually going to activate. It's right there on the edge. Partly, what you can do is relax the muscles along the bottom of the ribs and along the sides of the spine. And so they won't, they're, if they're not pulling down, if they're not tight, that will create lift. So just get a sense of, set your attention, your awareness there. For those of you in your chair, you might want to um, roll a little, have a little, be a little more upright if you can. And then, so just breathing, feeling that breath deep into your 
lower belly, low back, you may even feel energy moving down into your legs. Roll your elbows out slightly, opens the armpits so the energy can move freely. And then let your tongue touch the roof of your mouth and let the corners of your mouth turn upward in a slight smile. This is called mountain pose, also called post position. Just check in through your body, see if you can find anywhere where there's some tension from the head down into the neck, shoulders, chest. As you breathe, feel your chest expanding in four directions. Feel your hips, your buttocks, if there's any tightness, just let it relax. And now, what we're going to do now is just a gentle little twisting, but we're going to rock back and forth from one foot to the other. So one knee bends and one straightens. Let your arms relax, and you just want to let them, there's a little bit of twisting as you, your hips sway from side to side. Pressing down into the one foot and then the other. So I'm going to come around and, and help here. When you go this way, your hand crosses. I know you said you had. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Let the arms relax. Just, just swing. Don't think about moving your arms. Think about moving. Spread a little wider, a little wider, parallel, toes in a little bit, unlock your knees, and then just press, there you go, excellent, excellent. <coughs> your, spread your legs a little wider. Pushing down into the ground. Arms relax. Come across this way. Push down like you're squishing something down, and then you come the other way. doing that, getting the feeling of that. So again, what we're doing here is just using the lower body to generate this movement. A little bit of movement with the hands. You know, give them a little bit of direction. But mostly just let them swing freely. Straighten those feet. A little more. There you go. Excellent. Might feel a little odd, but I'd recommend it. Try it. Yeah? You can feel it in your back when you do this. Opening there in the sacroiliac joint right here. Very important place in our bodies if you haven't heard of the SI joint. It is important. Keep breathing. Just relax and breathe. Nice full breath. Now we're going to move, oh, straighten those feet, parallel. Harder than we thought, isn't it? Straighten those parallel feet. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of simple, seems basic. Maybe we don't need to do it, but we do. I want to start off on the wrong, right foot, right? Okay, now we're going to start tapping with the hand below the ribs, on the sides and back. And this sends energy to the adrenals. Adrenals are involved in stress and inflammation. So what I say when we do this is 
is we are anchoring and attending to the adrenals. Sending a little wave of energy in there. Bringing that adrenal energy back down to home. We all tend to, I think, I can speak for all of us, we all tend to get a little anxious, nervous, run on adrenaline. So we want to be good to our adrenals. And then we're going to move up to the liver on the right. Spleen on the left, cupped hand. Just let the arms swing up and then give them a little direction there at the end. Let the, let the energy drop down and come up, up with the arm. Little clapping, little percussion on the, the organs. Wake them up, get them functioning well. And then we're going to come up here with the heel of the palm, right there at the junction of the collarbone, shoulder, and chest. This is for the lungs. This, you can breathe nice and deep when you do this. Get that vibration riding in on the coattails of this breath. Keep pressing down on the bottom of the foot. There's a point down there called bubbling spring. It's like you're pumping this, this water energy up by pressing down and then releasing, just like a spring. Like. Now we're going to point. Just look straight ahead, point, and get your elbow way out in front so you're kind of making a big arc. You're going to feel this up in your upper back maybe down the side of your body. So we're not just crossing like this, we're going way out, okay? Way out, get the elbow out there. So this is, and this is, this stretching is called dynamic stretching. Stretching with, with movement. You two in the chair can do it. No? Yeah. <coughs> you have nice colors on over there. Look, everybody, everybody except the people sitting. They're all more bland. <laughs> okay, and then we're going to turn and look. And then keeping, keeping your feet down. Don't, if, you, if you can not, please try not to lift the heels. So again, this is down into the hips, down the side of the body, opening the side of the body. Keep the breath nice and full, steady breathing.
Let's see. There's a here's a form that's kind of popular. This is a there's there's a this is supposedly the most ancient Qigong form. It's called the five animal frolic. So there's five different animals. We're just going to do the tiger today. Okay. So again, feet are parallel. Shoulder width. So the tiger. What we're going to do is the tiger has these big claws, and the tiger crushes with its claws. So you want to feel that you're crushing something. This is sort of an isometric. And, and then, then the hands will go up and release and then crush and come down. We'll do that a few times. Very slow, so it's pretty easy to follow. So take a breath in. Exhale and sink down. Bending the knees. Crush and inhale. Inhale all the way up. Crush and exhale. So coordinate the movement with the breath, not holding the breath. Exhale, crush and come down. Really feel like there's resistance there, that you're crushing something. Inhale up. Exhale. Okay, and now hands roll up behind you like this. Inhale up, bending. Forward, just the upper body. Come down, exhale. Come up again, up the back. Now we're going to place one heel down, left heel, like so, and lunge out. And come back. Hands come up the back again. Inhale up, way up, and exhale down. Then up, then we come up the back and place the right heel down and come out. And what we want to do here is kind of sit back so most of the weight is on the back foot. You're opening this up by placing that heel there. Come down. Okay? So now, one of these, one of the issues with this, when you do this, you, you don't have to, usually, there's a lot of strain when you're doing this, so you really want to keep moving. There's different times that I might demonstrate something in a position like this, but usually putting all that weight on one leg, it's not beneficial, counterproductive. So let's do that one more time. And one of the key things of this is, so when we do this and we pull back, sit back, feel this opening in each joint, if you can. And what, what that does right here, especially, um, I don't want to compete with the local surgeons and their hip replacements, but <laughs> this, is, this can certainly delay these type of exercises where you're, you're setting this, this is called empty, right? It's all the weight is here and dropping down and opening up, opening those joints. Because, you know, it's obviously compressing the joint, right, as we walk. So anything we can do to stretch and open. The other thing is just this whole girdle area benefits from these type of movements. Um, but especially this for the hips. And also uh, my teacher, Dr. Who, says for prostate problems. So let's try this one one more time. Feet parallel. Unlock your knees and drop your tailbone. Belly is soft. Exhale down. Inhale, grab and lift. Exhale down. So we're going to move the hands up a little quicker so we can coordinate it. Inhale up. Exhale. Inhale, one more time up. And exhale down. Hands roll up and back. Inhale up, way up. Forward bending at the waist. Roll down. Inhale up. Now we're going to set that left heel down, extend, and then kind of drop back into the back leg. Pull the foot back in. 
up the back again, way up, reach, exhale, inhale up, place the right foot on the heel, drop back into the left, opening and pull back, the tiger, yeah, there's a, a another series of forms called bone marrow washing. And these are, there's two aspects to this. So the idea here is that we're trying to purify our energy. So releasing toxins from the body, um, energetic toxins, but also stimulating the body to clean itself out. Um, so this is, this is a combination of working with more energetic level, but also physical, okay? So on this one, again, feet parallel, shoulder width. So just follow along. We're going to be doing some very slow forward bending. And uh, so yeah, feet parallel, shoulder width, knees unlocked, drop the tail tailbone. So take a breath in. Now what we're going to do is exhale and run the hands down the inside of the legs. If you can keep your legs straight. Do so, relax your shoulders. Hands run in front of the toes, they fan in front of the toes, and grab an imaginary green onion on the sides of your feet and pull it up. Take your left hand, place it on the small of your back or your heart, depending how flexible you are. Your other hand, your right hand, you start making an arc and twirling each digit, so pinky, to thumb, so just twirling each one, and then twirling back through to the pinky, and reach up, reach over, grab your ear, turn in that direction, and look down at the opposite heel while lifting upward with your elbow. Just hold it for a moment, breathe, relax. And then inhale, release the hand up, and let it down. We go down again, exhale, hands run down the insides, fan in front of the toes, grab the onion, pull up. Right hand, palm facing out on the small of the back or up behind the heart. Left hand twirling and arcing up. Pinky to thumb. And back again to pinky. Reach up. Grab the balloon that's up there. Reach over. Grab your uh, ear lobe, I mean top of the ear. Turn and look down at the opposite heel while lifting the elbow up. Opening the left side of your torso. And release and inhale. Hand goes up. And we drop down once again. Exhale down. Hands run down the inside. Relax your shoulders. Fingers fan in front of the toes. Grab and pull up. Which one did we just do? Okay, left. <laughs> it's in the tradition of my teacher. <laughs> he doesn't always remember. <laughs> Twirling, pinky to thumb, back to pinky, reach up, over, grab the ear, turn. Look down at the opposite heel while lifting up with the elbow. Relax and breathe. And then release. Hand goes up as you inhale. And then once again we go down. Relax the spine, the shoulders. Fingers fan in front. Grab and pull up. Right hand 
small of the back or behind the heart. Left hand twirling and arching up. Reach up, over, grab the ear and turn, look down at the opposite heel. Breathe, lift the elbow up. Release, inhale, hand goes up. Very good. That's one of the bone marrow washing parts. There's 12 parts to that form. Okay. Uh, one more. A lot of people like this one. This one's called the Lotus. This is a Buddhist Qigong form. And this one is uh, helps develop and project compassion. So the lotus, like on here, the lotus flower, we make our hands into a lotus in front of the heart. Take a breath in. Exhale, hands drop as you bend a little bit. They come around as you inhale, up. Thumb, thumb and index touch. Back to the heart. Exhale, project out, and then scoop up. Back to where we started. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, back to the heart. Down. Reach up, inhale. To the heart. Project out, and we're bending at the knees, not at the waist. So the knees, good. Inhale up, down. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale all the way back to the heart. Exhale forward. Inhale all the way back to the heart. So we exhale as we go away from the heart, inhale as we come back. Exhale up, inhale up. Once more. And back up. And let them float down. Okay. <laughs> Good. Any questions? Comments? Want to? Wow. <laughs> Do you like that? Yeah. Okay. Good. Remember where you first encountered Qigong. It's, it's growing. It's growing slowly, but steady. What's that? Thursday at noon. Thursday at noon at the Muse. Yes, other classes I have in Ukiah. Um, if you want to uh, get on a mailing list, if you're, uh, you could, we could, I could pass uh, this around, and an email list is what I mean, uh, and I could email you a schedule weekly. I send out a schedule weekly. Anybody else? So once a week is here is better than nothing, but it's not fine. What is it, twice oh, a week? So my teacher and many teachers say 20 minutes a day. Oh. 
So if we pick That's up, kind of, yeah. If we yeah. pick up the learning, yeah. And just okay. Yeah. You know, it's it's obviously when you see movement like this, you think it's mainly for joint pains or you know, muscles, aches and pains. But you know, you can see we're working on opening things, breathing. As I mean, in some ways, the breathing is the most important part. Um, because if you can get the breath into the areas that are opening, that's really, you know, that's, that's, I mean, we could say it's oxygen or chi or whatever it is, but in some ways I think that's the most important part. So, so it can help, you know, I, I think it can help everything done regularly. I'm a bit of a zealot, I, I must admit. How full are your classes here? That uh, varies. Sometimes we have four and sometimes we have 12. Oh yeah, you know, we never we never fill it. I mean, it's never. There was one time I don't know what was I doing. It was free. <laughs> yeah. I think I had 15, but it still it wasn't. It was there was room. Yeah. So. Uh, um, this is something that Ross leads every time. You don't have to like memorize a form <laughs> like you do with some disciplines. That that's important. I think for me <laughs> to share with you, it's important for me. But so. Does similar things, but there's a lot of variety to it. Yes. I'm just interested in a little bit more of what, what you're doing that's new. It sounds like you're starting to engage some new practices. Well, yeah. So this this teacher, Dr. Who, he he teaches this she she form called what mainly it's wild goose, but he he also incorporates like that bone marrow washing as a separate thing. Wild goose is a is a series of forms. Um, Similar to Tai Chi, there's actually, he teaches 15, I think there's supposedly he knows 72. Um, I'm not, I don't know the forms, I haven't focused on the forms. I tend to isolate portions of the forms and, and just do those. But, and um, the only reason, you know, I mean, if, we're, if, if he's leading a form, I know enough, there's enough uh, similar movements that carry from one to another. So, for instance, I'll show you a couple of the forms, the parts of the forms of the wild goose. So, it's literally, I think they watch the goose and, you know. Again, here's the same thing we're doing. There's a lot of this. So, he, he's, he does medical qigong healing, works with patients. So, he's, he's a very well versed in how these movements, the therapeutic parts of these movements. So then there's this other one we've been practicing. Okay, so then one other thing I wanted to mention. So it, it, it'll be, there's a whole coordinary, coordinated series of movements that, that more or less move through most every part of the body. He, he will say specifically, you know, one is more for uh, self-healing, um, another one is more invigorating. Um, so there's all different aspects of how this, the therapeutic part of it. Um, he demonstrated one thing, the difference between medical qigong and martial qigong. So here's, I'll, I'll do martial qigong first. And then medical qigong, same movement. Right, so you can see it's more like you're going to strike your versus. The idea is that we want to take in the energy and just let it move through us rather than potentially waste it, you know, send it out. Most of us, a few, few, uh, a few of you are of that age where we're trying to conserve. So, but most of us, I think, are. You know, we're at the age where we're more interested in 
conserving, preserving. So. Could you say something, Ross, um, since there'll be viewers watching this, as far as people that may be uh, ill or at home and uh, maybe bedridden and the uh, way uh -huh. that they can experience their chi in, in different ways by just um, movements? We've never done anything lying down, uh, but I think sitting, uh, some of those same, you know, some of those movements we were doing with the, the lotus could be done sitting. You know, those kinds of things. Um, there's other movements. There's some movements where we... So sitting, I think, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not certain of how it would work bedridden, other than trying to, uh, there's there's one um, thread that goes through a lot of qigong, it's, it's working with what's called a microcosmic orbit, there's this energy that runs up the back and down the front, and that's something that, just, that you could concentrate, kind of meditate on, just f f getting a sense of, again like I was saying, if you can relax your spine, and relax your diaphragm, and just allow your body to see if you can feel move, movement of energy um, and you can you can facilitate it a little bit i would imagine in in bed you maybe be able to do this but a lot of a lot of movements where we're just basically i'm bending my knees and straightening them it's a good good question i don't know that i have a solid answer for that one now. Any other questions, comments? No? This is great. I, I really enjoyed this. It was nice to Good. do it in a group and just uh, yeah. feel yeah. the... Feel the chi. Yeah. So what is the process for making these more lines or just for this example? The form, I mean, it's all, it's all over. There's. There's a, let's see, um, there, you know, it'd be like moving like this, and then it, 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 it's just like a dance. It's like a, you know, I would, I would imagine taking up this whole space. And even there's this, there, he, Doctor Who has a certification, and if you, you have to do this one form, and then you, you know, if you do it, you get certified, and I think it's. About it would take up this whole space. It's it, yeah, it's going different ways. There's all there's all these different movements and yeah, it's it's and it's very beautiful and powerful both. Yeah, um, if you if you look it up, I think actually there's one he he's doing uh, Wild Goose Five. It's a little fuzzy. It's on YouTube, but Doctor Who H U. And then there's uh, yeah, it's Wild Goose Five. It's a very short one. And then there and then if you. Then there's another one, um, if you look up Doctor Who flexibility, he's, he's doing this beautiful movement, this repetitive, very graceful, lovely movement out by the ocean on the East Bay. It, it's, it's amazing to watch. So, I have a question. Yes? What's the difference between Tai Chi and Qi Gong? Uh, tai Chi is, it's specifically forms. I think there's uh, uh, 34 forms. Um, but sequence, there's specific sequence, 34 form, 108 form, you know, like, like the one I know, 34, you know. That's yeah. It, that kind of, but, but it's very specific from start to finish. And um, so Dr. Who's um, forms are very specific as well but he's not so hung up on the forms. He breaks down a lot of the pieces of those forms and we just do them, you know, so, so it's, it, he's, he's more, again, it's more medical approach, so it's more working on that sort of therapeutic approach. And breathing and stretching seems to be a part yeah, of Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a personal thing too. I, I, I'm, I, didn't, I wasn't that good at remembering all the sequence, so I, I gravitated towards just the, taking a piece of it and repeating it over and over.
that's yeah. Yeah. So in other words, you can create your own portfolio of Yeah. 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 I mean, at some point, I think I'm going to learn some of these forms. Yeah. But there's some students that have been studying longer than me, and they tell me I don't know any of them. But it doesn't. It, it's not. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you all for coming out. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Uh, I have some cards here.